Before there was AEW, there was Ring of Honor, ROH Wrestling. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of true. Obviously, there are other companies and so forth, but you know, when you really look at AEW and who they're trying to cater their product to, who they are trying to appeal to, that was an extension of what ROH used to be about and who they were trying to appeal to. And they were trying to go after the hardcore, younger, male wrestling fan. And ROH, like, has never been the big dog or anything like that, but lasted almost two decades and, you know, was a pivotal part of many wrestlers' careers throughout the wrestling industry. The CM Punks, the Brian Danielsons, the Tyler Blacks, I mean, Seth Rollins, Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens, El Generico, Sami Zayn. I could go on and on and on. You know, so many talents in the business over the past 15 to 20 years have had their careers positively impacted in some way, shape, or form based off of the time that they spent in Ring of Honor. So, you could look at a Ring of Honor and say, you know, this was a company that used to have an incredibly passionate, loyal, I used to call them ROH bot fan base. Like some of the crap I say about the AEW fans now and how they act towards AEW was the same stuff that I used to see out of ROH. And if anything, it used to be even more stringent, even more strong in that way because ROH was a bit of the underdog. Like you had WWE and you had TNA and then there was ROH was kind of the third dog. They were kind of the redheaded stepchild. They used to defend everything with that company, no matter how stupid it was. But now they probably sit there, the ones that even bother to watch anymore, which weren't that many, obviously. They'd say, hey, hey, Bully Ray, fuck off every day. Because look at where ROH is now. You could make an argument that ROH was a precursor for AEW, which is true. You could certainly absolutely make the argument that without ROH, there might not be an AEW or at least in its current form in its current time. And yet here we sit with the announcement late last week that Ring of Honor was basically ceasing operations for a while. If you're ceasing operations for a while, you know, there's a chance you might be done with your operations, period. That may not be the case, but probably representing at least a seismic shift in their business model and their way they conduct things and going to be in more of an independent wrestling type of pr promotion, even more than they kind of already were. Which is kind of sad in a way, but it is a reality of it. And to the fans that have looked at this and said, hey, AEW versus WWE, it's great to have two major wrestling brands and it's great to have this competition. You might look at it and there could be some positives to that, but there can also be some negatives. The current US wrestling marketplace really doesn't have much room for a third larger company. It just doesn't. There's not enough of a fan base to draw from. There's not enough of interest. There's not enough great talent in the business. And I'm sorry, there's not to be able to support three major wrestling companies. It's just not there, which is why ROH is in the damn shape they're in, among other reasons. So get excited about AEW versus WWE, but understand there are consequences. Nobody was really talking about ROH anymore. Hell, I don't even see people talking nearly as much about New Japan anymore. It's going to be a reflection of many things, but the reality is people have kind of honed in on WWE and AEW, or WWE not AEW, or AEW not WWE. It's kind of a byproduct of the current wrestling marketplace. And I look at this, and you have a lot of people talking about, oh, now here comes Vince McMahon, and he's going to come in and buy this. And my thought is, as I look at this as an opportunity for Tony Khan, not because of any loyalty. Yes, it's nice that ROH was a major part of helping AEW be, ultimately become what they could be. You know, loyalty, my ass. Like, this is business now. So you got to forget all that stuff. It's like you wish you wished it mattered, but it doesn't. But the reality is, is there are many, many things that I could point to, at least to several, that say that Tony Khan should absolutely go and buy ROH. If you want to be wrestling royalty, if you want to be a real big ball of shot caller in the wrestling industry, if you want to be like Vince McMahon, then this is a time where you need to buck up, boy, and be like Vince McMahon. Now, that doesn't mean you go buying a Ring of Honor because you want to block Vince McMahon from getting his hands on it. That should be of secondary, maybe even tertiary concern. 
That should not be the primary driving motivating factor for this. It should be that there are business sensibilities and business reasons to make such a move. And I think Ring, Ring of Honor should absolutely uh, be willing to sell to AEW. Because I mean, why would you want to stubbornly hang on to this point? And more importantly, to me, Tony Khan should be making the calls, knocking on the doors, and trying to buy this asset while he can at its depressed value. Because there are several benefits to doing so. Number one, you mentioned the video library. WWE obviously has the big distribution with Peacock in domestically and the WWE Network internationally. So you could take Ring of Honor and you have plenty of talent that has worked in Ring of Honor over the years in your company, you know, from the Samoa Joes of the world or the freaking Seth Rollins of the world, or exactly as Tyrell Black, AJ Styles has worked there. Like you can go on and on. There are plenty of talent in WWE that worked in Ring of Honor at some point in time. So it's a way for WWE to get more content for their streaming platforms and get the rights to that. Not gonna cost them a lot, and they might be able to make some money back off of it. Well, you look at AEW, you certainly say they could do the same damn thing. Brian Danielson, CM Punk, important key years of their career were spent there. You know, it's a large part of their career. You've got footage of them. You've got the Bucks, Omega, Cody, you can go on. It just kind of speaks to how important Ring of Honor was in the trajectory of a lot of wrestlers' careers over the years. So now you could sit there and take this old footage of them, tie it into what they're doing now. You have more content potentially available for your own YouTube channel, more content available potentially for your own website. And eventually, if you're talking about doing a streaming service maybe in 2022, here is a nice offering to say, hey, what else are we going to bring with this new streaming service that we didn't have before? Bam, here's all this two decades almost of ROH content. I can't imagine the price would be so ridiculous that it wouldn't be worth exploring it just there. Because even if you don't make a ton of money back, like it's still not necessarily a bad thing to have your hands on. So there's that. Then there's also the element here of... You know, this, Talk about ROH, I know their shows typically weren't on the best nights or the best time slots, but you're still talking about a way for AEW to get their hands on a brand that has you know, national over-the-air network television access. When you look at Sinclair, many of their stations being Fox stations, it's one benefit for ROH is while they were showing up as kind of like a second or third or fourth rate promotion, they are still showing up on over-the-air network television, which is something that Tony Khan really doesn't have available to him, since unlike Vince McMahon, when you talk about the Fox network with Friday Night Smackdown. Yeah, it's not the same thing. It's not quite apples to oranges here. But at the same point in time, if you're looking at it from Tony Khan's standpoint, you actually are, which you should be doing, trying to grow your domestic audience and meanwhile kind of diversify your offerings and your overall wrestling portfolio here is a great way to do so i don't see why sinclair would be opposed to a tony khan and aew coming in and buying ring of honor out from under them no more money losses there for sinclair a company they never really wanted to invest much money in anyway they just wanted to put cheap shit on tv and they thought hey we could at least break even maybe make a little bit of money but now you could do that there's no reason why you can't at least stay in those same time slots potentially throwing out the matzo ball of, hey, we could put CM Punk out there once in a while, Brian Danielson out there, Omega, The Bucks, Cody, Moxley. Like, all of these guys with some type of ROH ties, you could sit there and say to Sinclair, hey, we're doing this. Like, we want something a little bit better in terms of our date and time slots here and might potentially be able to get it. Meanwhile, you're getting out there in local, smaller marketplaces and potentially in front of more eyeballs than you would just with your cable television offerings with a TNT or a TBS. Why wouldn't you want to take that opportunity? And I also think there's a big play here to make, and I know this is one of the things that AEW hangs their hat on, which I think is stupid, is the fact that they don't have a developmental. Well, here is a perfect chance with a company that has some relationships, with a company that has some infrastructure, to have your own damn developmental because the reality is a lot of your freaking wrestlers need it. Guys and gals. In terms of the crispness of their move sets to the way they can actually tell stories in the ring, there is so much lacking and missing for so many of these talents just from the in-ring components alone. Never mind the fact 
you know, all the injury risks and dangers with working with some of these talents, no matter what these dumb fans say, that just sit there, oh, snarf, 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 for every flippy move that it happens, no matter how sloppy, stupid, or ridiculous it is, or how potentially reckless and dangerous it is. You also need a place for a lot of these talents to learn actually how to be characters and performers. And while that was certainly never ROH's true forte, like, in charge of that, now you could give it its own identity and you could do its own thing. Meanwhile, you know, depending upon the nature of some of the contracts, like, it might be appealing to be able to now get somebody like the Briscoes into the fold and maybe you're into Jay Lethal or something, you want to bring him into the fold, like, there's got to be some talent there in ROH. I mean, admittedly, I haven't paid a ton of attention to him, and that's part of the problem because nobody else fucking has either. But here's a chance to build your own developmental. Be able to identify talent younger in the prospect process, get them under your umbrella without the risk of losing them to WWE, but saying, hey, we don't have to sit there and try to justify what we're paying them by putting them on AEW Dynamite or AEW Rampage. We could put them on our wage and then let them work in other indies as well, but get more control over more assets, in this case, assets being talent. Why in the hell wouldn't you do that? You could potentially even leverage ROH as a developmental in terms of your production and the way you present your show and try and experiment different things here. I'm sorry, as I keep talking about it more and more, you know, it's less fandom or geekdom type of stuff that would want something like this to happen. And I just think it really makes good business sense on a variety of levels. And the cherry on the type or top or the icing here is if Vince McMahon and WWE did have any interest in them. I, I don't envision, like, there is a chance that if you got into a bidding war with Vince, like, he might want to outbid it up a little bit to try and drive up the price artificially and then bow out and say, uh, I was just trolling him. There's also a piece of he might not care that much. He might not be worried about it. Meanwhile, if you're AEW, like, you can keep this away from Vince. That's also an added bonus. It is not the reason to do it. It is just an added bonus. So yeah, like, out of the bad can come good. Out of disaster can come resurrection, rebirth, and resurgence. Now maybe it's too far gone, but maybe it's not. And like I said, if Tony Khan wants to actually be the big wrestling tycoon that he keeps talking about on Twitter that he is, and here's an opportunity, sir, to show what the hell you got. Go out there and go get it. Because the benefits, in my opinion, are certainly there. And it could have some positive ramifications for your company for a long time. Or if it doesn't really help or doesn't move the needle, how much did you really lose? After all, you're supposed to be a billionaire many times over. And much richer than Vince, even though it's mostly all your dad's fucking money. But whatever, that's the way the world works. Like, you got the resources to do so. Act like it. Go make a big move. Make something happen. Because your company and the wrestling business as a whole would probably be better off if you did.